everyone it's the financial reboot investment team with your daily market wrap uh, from our beautiful kalihi hawaii our satellite trading desk uh, so let's get started it was kind of an interesting market today you know it was a little sell down today it's the worst day we've had since september 5th uh, about a half percent sell down you know the dow was down about 112 points uh, s p about 12 points and the nasdaq was down uh, 35. So, you know, I'm pretty much across the borders, right at about a half percent down. So, you know, we have to ask yourself the same subject we talked about yesterday. Everybody's expecting this big crash. Uh, everybody talks about the imminent crash of the dollar and all this stuff. But really, you have to ask yourself, in this bull market, as strong as it is and as voracious as it is, uh, are these half percent sell downs enough? Are they enough to reset the market to go to another level? Uh, are they enough to to uh, get new buying into the market and push the market higher? Or are they a prelude to something worse? Uh, really, the fear indi indicator is telling us that this wasn't that big of a deal. Uh, we're down, we were up seven cents, not even, not even a percentage point on the VIX. The VIX was up a lot higher today, but pretty much it, the, the way it closed, there was, there was some buy the dip too in the end of the day. So. It's an interesting situation, you know, do you start going all in or do you start trimming your holdings expecting something worse to happen? You know, we had real soft earnings today, you know, we, we nothing explosive like yesterday, but tomorrow's early earnings calendar brings something much more exciting. You know, before the bell, we've got Raytheon and Nokia um, and we've also got Ford and Xerox. Uh, those are some pretty good names, and that that should start us off, uh, depending on how these report, uh, that should set the tone for the day. But really, it's after the market. We've got the big ones. Uh, we've got Google, which is, of course, <laughs> the massive, most massive of the massive companies. Uh, we've got Microsoft, which is your big uh, software desktop uh, computing company. And we've got Western Digital, which is digital storage. Uh, those would be interesting after the bell. And then for you people that like uh, like the wrestling, WWE, just as a note, is uh, reporting before the bell tomorrow. So let's see how the McMahon family's doing with that. You know, wrestling's just like a time it's survived over the years, you know, regardless of being fake and all that stuff. It's just an, an amazing business. That, and it's amazing what the McMahon family's done with wrestling. They've truly turned it into a, a whole, uh, you know, sports entertainment. You know, so, you know, that's really the way the day went today. You know, we bought a stock and we'll talk about that in a second. But let's just look at commodities and Bitcoin for real quick. Bitcoin had a good day right now. As we're speaking, it's up about one hundred forty three bucks. Um, it was down as low as I think fifty four hundred earlier today. You know, it, it's uh, they've got another fork happening and stuff like that. Um, very you know, if you're into Bitcoin, man, I guess it was a good buy the dip opportunity, right? Because it's got as low as 54 and you're already bounced back up to 5,600. So that's how Bitcoin went. And you guys know we're long in gold. We've been talking about it for a while now. Uh, last night, it got a little dicey with the gold futures on spot gold. Uh, we were watching and last night about 7, 8 o'clock Hawaii time, gold futures went below that 1275. You know, that's the that's the inflection point that we, we're we watching on our trade. And uh, it went down to 1272 and we're all like, oh, here we go. Uh, you know, there's some there's some potential catalysts for gold. And that's why we're keeping the trade live. And it really hasn't broken any any uh, serious support that we're we're uh, watching in, in our eyes. And so we're going to stay with the trade. You know, like I said, we've got some of those $122 strike calls um, about a month out. And the reason we've got that is because, you know, you look, North Korea, uh, B-52 bombers, we just put another carrier out there. Venezuela's got their debt payment, uh, things like that. Uh, and uh, just a whole lot of bad stuff going on. Well, potentially bad stuff. What if the tax reform fails, things like that? What if, you know, they, we, I think we have a Fed speech tomorrow also, too. So we'll keep an eye on that. But as long as that stays around the, across that 1275 and as long as that time decay doesn't start really hurting the options, we'll, we'll stay in this play, uh, expecting it to do something good. You know, actually, if you want to follow along on that play, it's not too late to get in that. Uh, you can see Bitcoin did well. You see the dollars had a soft day today. Uh, down against the euro and the pound and the and the yen. I think the dollar index, uh, the USD dollar index, is uh, down 25 cents. 
And so that's interesting. Bonds got a little pickup today. You can see yesterday the 10-year was at about 2.41. It's at 2.43 now, a uh, little 0 0.02. But that's a 1% move. And that, that affects the markets too when the interest rates go up. So, or uh, I'm sorry, when the uh, treasuries go up. And so basically that's the wrap for, for the market today. You know, uh, we've got a little bit of earnings going on, but the, really the big one, the, the big optics come out after the market with the Google and the Microsoft and uh, Western Digital too. Western Digital is actually a pretty well traded stock. Now, we got a question. Somebody asked a question yesterday and what they asked was Apple. They're asking about Apple. What is our view of Apple going forward? Well, let's go check out Apple. So, oh, geez. Sorry about that, gang. Let's take a look at Apple. You know, Apple, it's had a nice run, right? Especially since last summer. You, you look, you know, it's uh, since July. I mean, it was down there at 142. You get picked up a good 15 points. At one point, you picked up maybe a good 25 points. You know, and so it, it, it looks like a good stock. Lately, in the short term, Apple's been under a lot of pressure. Uh, you know, the, the, the iPhone, it, it's, you're always, every time Apple has their investor meeting or their product meeting, you know, you, you see it afterwards. You know, all these people come out and say, oh, nobody's going to buy it. Uh, I think um, Wojak, who was one of the original founders of Apple, even came out and said he's not going to rush out and buy this new iPhone. You know, that potentially could hurt the stock. But, you know, Apple is not just iPhones. That's what I always try to tell people when they ask me. But, oh, I heard there's bad news on the iPhone. Man, Apple, we should short it. Um, or the opposite, right? And really, Apple has a lot, lot more going for it than just the iPhone. I mean, we are on Apple merchandise right now. We have iPads. Uh, we have iPhones. We have iMacs and everything like that. We're like most people that are that are a little bit uh, smarter than the uh the other side <laughs> i shouldn't say that because but anyways we also have windows machines in the office but you know apple you know if you look at that chart man it's just been kind of up and down and it, it seems like it petered out right it had this high over here uh and then it had another high it tried to do that high again but it couldn't quite do it and then it just kind of based here and it broke down so what's in the future for apple you know i mean that's a good good question we like apple going forward um, and the reason is we like the economy going forward. And, you know, it, it's a lot of this stuff that's happened with Apple is, is in, baked into the price already uh, with the iPhone news. Um, let's see how things go forward. You know, it's uh, it's one of the best things you have going for you when you're trading Apple is that it's such a liquid stock and it's such a popular stock that, yeah, that creates big movements. Um, which can work against you, but it's easy to get in. It's easy to get out. The options are easy to buy, easy to sell. I like Apple. Um, if you're asking a price target, I would say Apple is about 165, 170 by the end of the year, if not more. You know, and and we'll see. Let's let's see how this uh, this iPhone does cycle through. Let's see if there's something else. I just saw another article about Apple and the secret car they're making and stuff like that. So. You guys, if you're asking, we're bullish on Apple and we think about 165, 170 by the end of the year. That's only a couple months. So, you know, and if you're a long term Apple holder, there's no reason to sell. Now, again, if you look at it, all your technical signals are sell, but this is all short term. Your longer term technical signals are buy. So, what this tells you is if you're a long term supporter of Apple, you should be buying the stock right now. It's cheap, okay? Of course, if you're a bear on Apple, you should be selling the stock because it's expensive. But according to the technical indicators, if you ask us, uh, we think it's a good long-term buy. Now, like we said, if you're a trader now, you know, you have to use, it, probably it, we could give you a better uh, opinion if it was during the market day. But So that's our opinion on Apple. We say about 165, 170 by the end of the year. And we're bullish on it. Could be more than that. You never know. But so that wraps up today's show, you know, from beautiful Kalihi, Hawaii. We we'll hope you guys had a good day today. It was a little red, a little ugly. But tomorrow's another day, you know, and game two of the World Series tonight, uh, two o'clock Hawaii time. I guess it's about eight o'clock uh, L.A. time or Eastern time. 
So you guys step back from the market. It was a rough day today. Let's lick our wounds. Let's regroup. And you were, let me tell you, uh, I'm sorry. I almost forgot. I mentioned we were going to talk about it, what we bought today. So just real quickly, uh, we bought Coke today. We like Coke. Uh, we had Coke in the last option cycle. And we broke even on it. We thought there'd be a run up into earnings, but Coke had good earnings. Uh, we feel like at that low 46 is a great buy point for Coke. Um, so we bought some $47 calls and we bought them about three, four weeks out. That's what we did. Um, if you're wondering what we did. So if you want to play along, that's what we just got into. So we're, you know, just a couple. We've got a lot of plays on the board. I mean, we're, we're, we've got a lot of clients and so we're, we've got a lot of plays, but Really, the across the board plays right now are gold. Uh, we've got those 122 calls, and we just got into the Coca Cola uh, $47 calls. So, there you go. Anyways, we'll talk to you guys tomorrow. This is uh, Pat Comer from the Satellite Trading Desk in beautiful Kalihi, Hawaii. You guys have a fantastic Wednesday night. Aloha.